afternoon. Um, I'm Stacy Dawson with the Washington County LSU Extension Office. I do the Family Consumer Sciences there. Um, I'm back again for another installment of our Healthy Living series that we're doing. Um, today we're going to focus on walking with ease. Um, I know that sometimes we sit and we get stiff or as we get older sometimes it's harder to get up. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about um, how to make that easier or th easier or things that we can do um, to make that a little smoother for us at any age, any level, um, just so we can, like we've talked about in the past, just get up, get moving, get that heart rate going, get that blood flow moving, um, because it has so many benefits to it. So um, we're just going to jump right in, and then afterwards, after we talk about why we need to do it, some tips for doing it, we're going to very, very briefly introduce the Walking with Ease program. Um, some of the benefits, um, know your benefits, um, is to maintain um, your weight, to lose some body fat, prevent or manage some conditions such as type 2 or type two diabetes, heart disease, cardiovascular disease, all those different things we've talked about before, um, by getting our heart rate moving, getting our blood moving, um, making sure that we're maintaining our weight, we're going to help prevent most of those. Um, we're going to improve our cardiovascular fitness. Um, I know sometimes that sounds kind of like funny phrase, but making sure that our heart is regular and, and pumping the way that it's supposed to, moving things, um, feeding properly, different things like that. Um, strengthening your bones and muscles, just getting out there, getting moving, you're going to um, make sure that your muscle mass is changing and you're growing and you're going to help those bones, um, we're going to hopefully put a delay on things of, such as osteoporosis by building that strength in your bones and keeping them strong. Um, increase your energy levels. I know we all need more energy levels. We were just talking earlier when I got here about how we're all yawning today. Some days you're just like, you just have those days. And so even just getting up and moving and, and walking, even if it's just briefly, we can, we can build those energy levels back up. It can improve your mood and your cognition and your memory. We talked about your memory. Um, I think it was the last time I was here, we talked about how important that is and, and how we want to keep our brains fit. We want to keep those brains going and, and so that. And then it also affects your sleep. Like, are you, it, it'll help you sleep better. Um, I know that we could all benefit from more sleep. Um, I know for me, sometimes it's being on my phone until 10, 30, or 11. And then I'm like, oh, now I need to go to sleep, but I can't. Um, so maybe instead of being on my phone, just getting up and walking around the coffee table a couple of times. Um, so that's another benefit is it even improves your sleep. Um, improving your balance and coordination. I'm the kind of person that can trip on a flat surface. Um, I've done it before. I've done it plenty of times before. Um, so just getting up and moving, you're working on enhancing those skills as well. Um, strengthens your immune system. I know in the last couple of years we've been through the major ups and downs with um, health and health concerns and, and you know you just keep your body functioning and you keep your systems moving and you keep your systems functioning and when everything's functioning properly you're going to be able to better fight disease and then reduce stress and tension. The thing that I know a lot of us, um, a lot of us deal with is stress and tension especially um, when you are at work all day long and you put the stress joints and your muscles and your bones by sitting in a chair all day and so like we've talked about in our first couple lessons there are things we can do to even stay active in a chair but um, these are just some benefits of getting up and walking um, even just ever so briefly during the day um, when you're walking the other thing to consider is your technique um, one of the first places that we want to work on is keeping your head up looking forward looking up um, a lot of times, I'm, I'm bad about it, and I know I've admitted it before, and I'll admit it again. Um, when I walk, like, I want to walk like this. And that is not good for your posture. That is not um, a good way to keep yourself up and strong and to build those muscles. And really, all that's doing is creating a little more tension in your neck. But um, you don't want to be looking at the ground. Um, the other habit that people have when walking is this on your phone. Um, so that's the other thing that we really don't want to have. 
Um, so no looking down, uh, no looking at your phone, looking at your phone is really dangerous when you're walking anyway, so we'll just avoid that hazard altogether. Um, and again, we talked about how being on your phone, you kind of scrunch your, your um, shoulders and your neck. Um, so that's the other place when you're walking. Keep your shoulders and your neck, you know, good and, you know, relaxed. You don't want to be stiff when you're walking. This is supposed to be relaxing. This is supposed to help take the stress away. So tall and relaxed and head forward. Um, and then swinging your arms freely, slightly bent at your elbows. And if you want to put a little motion into that, that's even better because that's just that much more exercise that you're getting. Um, I know that sometimes it looks funny when you're walking and you're doing that, but you're you're actually building muscle here, especially if you wanted to go ahead and add um, a little weight to that too. So go ahead and have those elbows bent, just having them up like that, and just go ahead and give them a little swing if you want to. Um, it's okay, because again, you're pumping those arms, you're pumping those muscles, you're building some muscle in there as well. Um, hold your stomach in, um, keep it slightly tightened in your back straight. You know, like again, we don't want you to arch forward. Um, keeping that spine aligned, keeping this pulled in, because when you pull in your stomach, you're working on building those core muscles, um, strengthening that as well. Um, and then make sure you're walking smoothly, rolling from your heel to your toe. Don't be stamping on the ground. You're not angry. We're not angry while we're doing this. We're doing this to feel better, to do better, to be a better, a better, a better version of ourselves. So just kind of make sure you're rolling from heel to toe. Make it a nice, smooth, gentle walk. Um, so the lady that's in my picture up here, she's a great example of what you need to be doing. Um, I think she, you know, I think we all need to work on that because, like I said. There's a lot of things in this that I don't particularly do that I should be doing. Um, plan your routine. Um, routine is key when you're going to start walking. Make sure your shoes have proper arch support, um, that you have the nice flexible soles um, to cushion your feet and as well as absorb the shock. If you have those thin little layer shoes, every time you come down, you're going to feel that aftershock and that aftershock is what's going to eventually cause some of that pain and stuff in your knees. And so we want to have that cushion. We want to have that flexibility um, so that when we are coming down, it's a little bit of a softer blow on our joints and so that we don't have that um, kind of grinding pain later. Um, wear loose fitting clothes and uh, gear that's appropriate for the weather. So if it's cooler weather, you might consider wearing layers. Um, wear moisture wicking um, materials, those are great. Um, they kind of help keep you cool as well, and then you don't have that sweaty, sticky feeling where your clothes are stuck to you because at that point I'm like, I don't do this anymore, I feel gross, like I just don't do it. So moisture wicking clothes are great. If you're going to walk at night, wear bright colors or reflective tape. And then um, wear sunscreen, sunglasses, a hat. Um, if you're going to be out during the day, I teach sun safety a lot for the 4-H kids. And, you know, we talk about the importance of sunscreen and, you know, even if all you can find is 15 SPF, that just means you're 15 times, it takes 15 times longer to sunburn than if you had nothing. So even if you have just 15, that's great. And then when we talk about a hat, we talk about how just wearing a hat that covers your ears, your neck, everything, because your skin it's just so important that we want to keep that safe. There's my tangent on some things because I'm fair skin and redheaded. So I go on a tangent. Um, so, um, but may, um, and then also for your gear, you may choose like an activity tracker. There's a lot of apps out there, a pedometer, um, just things that help you keep track of your steps and your distance and different things like that. Um, and then choose your course carefully. Um, I know it's just easier to be like, okay, well, there's a sidewalk, I'm going to go get on it. But for your safety, um, avoid places that have back sidewalks, that have potholes, um, that have low lane, low line limbs. Um, you know, those are just hazards that can cause us to trip, they can cause us to fall, they can cause us to roll an ankle, a lot of different things. And so, um, to make it easier for you, because again, we're talking about walking with ease, um, make sure that you just avoid those type of areas, um, smooth, flat surfaces, and then if you have a day where it's yucky outside, don't use that as an excuse not to go walk. 
Um, I know that's really easy to do. Oh, it's raining. Sorry, I can't go. Um, no, don't use that as an excuse. Um, try somewhere like a shopping mall. I don't know for sure around here, but there are some malls that do open early um, for people to come in and walk. So um, choose your course, um, even if it's raining, even if it's dusty outside, there is still a place for you to go. Um, continue cleaning our routine. And we want to make sure that we're warming up before we go walk. So that's walking slowly for 10 minutes. That's warming up our muscles. That's letting our body know that, hey, we're getting ready to go do something. Because if you jump in to doing any kind of exercise, even walking, um, if you jump into that kind of cold muscle, cold turkey, however you want to word that, um, you're kind of, you're setting yourself up for injury, strain, cramps, different things like that. So warm your body up, let it know, like, hey, I'm about to start doing something. You need to get warm, you need to get ready for this. Um, your cool down, after you walk, um, after you've done your exercise, go ahead and walk slowly for five to 10 minutes. So let your muscles kind of relax, but you didn't just all of a sudden stop your motion. Because when you stop your motion, all that lactic acid and stuff gets built up and that's where you're gonna get those cramps later on. So go ahead and let your body know, like, we've done all this, I know I put a lot of stress on you, but now we're gonna take it easy for a minute. I'm gonna like let all, let it all kind of slow down, relax a little bit. <clears throat> so that's why a cool down is so important. And this stretching is extremely important. Um, again, after your cool down, you may want to stretch because you may want to um, kind of keep those muscles kind of loose because again, we don't want all that buildup that could cause us injury or something later. And then if you prefer to stretch before walking. Still make sure you warm up first because stretching is still a form of that activity and if we stretch, we could pull something, we could do something. So we need to make sure that before we do anything, those muscles are ready, those muscles are warmed up um, and that they're prepared for whatever is about to come at it. So that's, we wanna focus on cleaning our routine. And then the next thing is to set those realistic goals with our um, aerobic activity. We want to get 100, at least 150 minutes of um, moderate um, aerobic activity or 75 minutes of vigorous aerobic activity a week or even just a combination of the moderate and the vigorous throughout the week is, is great too. Um, the guidelines suggest that we spread our exercise out through the week. So um, we don't want to do push-ups every day, like that we need to, work on different areas of the body throughout the week. So one day we may walk and then the next day we may focus on push-ups or sit-ups. And so spread those activities out throughout the week. Um, we don't want to just keep doing the same thing over and over again when you're going to get bored with it and then you're going to give up on it. And two, you probably won't see the same, you won't see the results that you want because you're probably only focused on one part of the body. So mix it up. Um, do intense one day and then less intense the other day. Make sure you're mixing that up. Um, greater amounts of exercise provide the better benefits, but even the small, even small amounts are beneficial. Um, we want to aim for 30 minutes every day, and it doesn't have to be, again, it doesn't have to be 30 minutes all at once. If all you can spare is five minutes every hour or, you know, every so often, do your five minutes here and there. Um, but we want to try to get that 30 minutes in every day. Um, start slowly. If exercise has not been in your normal routine for a while, um, you may start with five minutes a day. And then once you get in the habit of five minutes a day, then 10 minutes a day until you've reached that 30 minute mark that you can do every day. And then always talk to your doctor before you start any type of exercise program. Make sure that you know, your body is ready for it, you're healthy enough for it. Um, they may know things that, you know, be like, this might not be the best option for you, but let's try this. So always um, consult your doctor and do what you can within your own limitations. Never overstress your body or do more than you can. Um, the other thing is strength training. Do strength training exercises for all your major muscle groups at least twice a week. So one day you may focus on your legs, you may focus on your arms and your core. 
Um, again, we don't want to do them all in the same day, but one day we can do some of it and the next we can do another. So at least twice a week we want to focus on our major muscle groups. Um, and then make it a goal um, to do at least like one set, so that would be 12 to 15 repetitions. Um, make it a goal to try to do um, an entire set, and that could be with weights, without weights, but just to not to tire out those muscles, try to get through a whole set of those um, in, that, in that period of when you're doing something. And like I said, a set we would consider not 12, 15, so when we did um, our get fit while you sit, we did about 10 to 20, so that's probably about where you need to be, but again, um, just wherever you're kind of comfortable at on the couch. Um, tracking your progress. Um, when you track your progress, um, that's gonna, it helps you kind of see the benefits. And, and sometimes people are like, I don't physically see it, but if you can see it on paper or you can see it in a different way, um, it kind of gets you in that mindset, it gets you excited, like, hey, this is what I've done, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm working for. Um, just so even the simplest keeping records of your steps, how far you walked, how long you walked. Because, like I said, when you look back at your journal or whatever you're keeping, you're going to be able to look back and go, you know, look what I did in a week. And then look what I did in a month. But now look what I've accomplished in a year. And like you get to see that. So like I said, maybe it wouldn't be, the changes may not be outward that you see immediately, but when you're able to when you're able to look, I'm back, I'm okay, I'm gonna have to hold it. Um, but when you're able to look at your progress over time, you're gonna be like, Man, look at look at how far I walked, and, and look at how many calories I burned, and look and just look at what I've accomplished. So maybe, and that's gonna kind of keep boosting you. That's gonna kind of keep you motivated, keep you going. And so tracking your progress is extremely important. And like we said, try using the app, the activity tracker. The pedometer, um, keep it in a journal. Um, like I said, sometimes writing things down and going back and looking at that is just going to make a world of difference. Um, some of the apps that we found, the best overall one um, that I found while looking was Map My Walk. If you're going hiking, the walk meter, um, walking and hiking, hiking GPS um, for tracking your calories, um, there's the Argus. Um, and then the best for motivation, which would be what I needed, is the Fitbit app mobile tracker. And then if you're going to do it for a cause, there's charity miles. And then if you're going to use a treadmill, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with using a treadmill, um, but there's the virtual walk, the walk, the distance app. So no matter how you're doing it, why you're doing it, there's an app to help you track your progress. So just keeping track of it, keeping up with it, um, that can make the world a difference for are, you. Are those free, free apps? I don't know if they're free. I didn't, um, I just kind of Googled the best ones and that okay. was what they kept saying. Some of them may be, I'm not sure that they all are. Okay, thank you. Um, the next thing is to stay motivated. Set yourself up for success. So start with simple goals. Start with the mindset of, I'm going to walk five or ten or however many minutes of lunch today. Keep it simple, keep it basic, especially if you're just getting started back with your program. But keep those goals, have a goal, have something in mind that's attainable. Um, like I said, if you're just getting started, five minutes is extremely attainable. And then once you, um, once you kind of get that, once that first goal becomes a habit, then start your new goal. So, my five minutes has become my habit for me to get up every day and do my five minutes. So now my new goal is to reach 10 minutes. And just keep building those and building on those. Um, and then before you know it, that 30 minutes is a habit and you don't think twice about it. Um, make your walk enjoyable. Um, make it something fun. I know sometimes when people are like, oh, I don't want to walk. I don't want to do that. That's effort. I've worked all day and I just don't want to go do anything else. But find some way to make it fun. Um, ask your friend or your neighbor to go or take your dog. Um, you know, having somebody there to talk to or just to have by your side. And sometimes just having that accountability partner can make a world of difference. That person that says to you, like, hey, 
um, we can go do our walk today, or hey, did you eat right today, or hey, what did you have for lunch? Just that sometimes having that extra person can also kind of keep you motivated as well. And then if you really, really like the atmosphere of having groups or being a group of people, um, you can join a health club, you can start a walking group. There are different things like that that you can go be a part of. Um, and then listen to music while you're walking. I know that sometimes you hear not to do that because it's a just it could be a distractor and you know you want to stay focused because you know you just need to pay attention to what's around you. But for some people that works, some people that helps. And so just do whatever you can to make it where you want to get out and want to go do it and where you enjoy it. Because if you enjoy it, um, you're gonna you're gonna stick to it. Um, the other thing um, is vary your routine. Um, we've talked about mixing it up um, quite a bit, um, but plan several different routes. So, because once you've gone around the same route multiple times, I like think it's monotonous and you're like, well, I've seen that tree and I've seen that bird and you know, I've already seen all of this. And so, changing your scenery, changing your view. Um, can make a world of difference in, in, in wanting to stay moving and going. Um, if you walk in a neighborhood, go outside the neighborhood, go to a state park, go walk around the city. You'll see some interesting things if you walk around the city. You'll have to wear stories to tell. Um, and then, um, so the more you walk, like the more you use your body, or the more you get used to it, um, the more you do it, you might try to start taking on hills and taking on stairs and and different things like that. Um, and then cycle, another thing you might could do to vary it is cycle between um, moments where you have a fast paced walk for so many minutes and then you'll slow down for so many minutes and then pick up your pace again and just vary your speed because you're going to have a lot of benefits um, from that as well. But regardless of what you do, let somebody know um, where your route is. If you're walking alone, let somebody know where you're going, where you're going to be. Um, and then always walk in well with areas as well. So making sure that others know where you are is very important when you're walking alone. Um, and then take missed days in a stride. If you find yourself skipping days, don't give up. It's not the end of the world. We all have those days where we don't want to do it. We all have days we don't want to get out of bed. We all have days where we don't want to do something. But it's not the end of the world. You didn't ruin your routine. You didn't ruin the process. Um, it's not the time to give up. It's okay. It happens. We all have our days. But just when you have those days where you don't want to go do it, remind yourself of how good you feel when you go do it. Um, and when you have physical activity in your life, remember how good that feels and how much better you feel and, and you know, your goals at the end of this. And then when you fall off track, get back on track. So you may fall off, and so we may have to backtrack to where we start doing it five minutes and then build back into the 10 minutes but just because you fall off the track doesn't mean you can't get back on it it's not the end of the world so um staying motivated is key to doing something like that um so that is just kind of our tips for staying um keeping walking making it easier to walk hopefully you found something in there that you're like i go with a partner or i wear the right shoes or you know, do something like that, it would make my, it, it would make it a little easier for me to get up and get moving. Um, so very briefly, I'm going to introduce the Arthritis Foundation Walk With Ease program. Um, it is a program that in time, um, it might be something that we want to do, but for today, we'll just kind of very briefly visit what the program is, um, and then you can look into it more as well. Um, you can just Google the program, um, but it's a, it's a great little program if it is something that we choose to do. So, um, it's a community-based physical activity and self-management education program. Um, it can be used by groups or individuals. Um, individuals, there's a workbook that you can use. Um, it is a six-week program. Um, it's a multi-component program. Um, that includes health education, stretching and strengthening, and motivational strategies. And then the group sessions include, include socialization time, um, the pre-walk information, lectures, the warm-up, pull-down, and 15 to 30 minute walk period. So um, there is that. And then just some goals of the program. 
Um, to promote education of, about successful physical activity for people with arthritis, um, to promote education about arthritis self-management and walking safely and comfortably, and to manage participants to continue their walking program and explore other exercise self-management programs and deliver the benefits of those with arthritis. So that's just something to look forward to maybe in the future. Um, so, um, but I hope that this has helped you learn to walk with ease, um, giving you a little more comfortability with walking and, and some ways to enhance your physical activity and keep you moving. So, thank you.